and I'm really excited to be able to keep teaching you all about salmon. Last week you learned about the salmon eggs, the first stage of the salmon life cycle, and you learned about some of the things that they need in their habitat. Do you remember what some of those things were? Salmon eggs need a curvy stream that has cobble and gravel on the bottom so they get enough oxygen. And salmon in other life stages need those things in their habitat too. Today we're going to talk about the next stage of salmon, these little guys. This is what the salmon look like when they first hatch out of their eggs. Do you know what they're called? They're called alvin. Alvin look like two giant eyeballs with a tail and a big orange ball attached to their bellies. The big orange ball is called a yolk sac and that's where they get all of their nutrition at this stage of their life. Which is good because alvin are too tiny to go looking for food in the stream. They'd get washed away. Now just like the salmon eggs, alvin stay in their red or their nest at this stage of life and they're tucked away in the little gaps that are between the cobble and the gravel on the stream bed. And since they're spending all their time in their red, they can't move around to find better habitat. So it's really important that their stream is healthy and has all the right things for them to thrive. One thing that can help with the healthy habitat is the vegetation, the plants that are growing alongside the stream in what's called the riparian zone. A riparian zone is the area alongside a stream or a, any kind of waterway. When there are many different kinds of plants growing in the riparian zone, their roots help hold the stream bank in place and keep dirt from falling into the water, uh, which is called erosion. This helps prevent soil from falling in the water and making it too cloudy for the salmon to see or to breathe. Trees and bushes that hang over the stream also help provide shade, which cools the water down for the salmon. But not all plants are equal when it comes to creating healthy habitat for salmon. It's important to have a diverse plant community in the riparian zone, meaning that there's lots of different kinds of plants growing there. And for this to happen, there needs to be mostly native plants growing there. What do you think a native plant is? Native plants are plants that have been growing here for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. They weren't brought here by any people. They have formed great habitats over a very long time and salmon have adapted to live with those plants in their ecosystem. And when those tree branches hang over the river, they provide shade and they cool the water down, which is really important for these little salmon. Unfortunately, a lot of streams, especially streams in urban areas, are surrounded by non-native invasive plants. What do you think a non-native invasive plant is? Non-native invasive plants are plants that were brought here from somewhere else by people, sometimes on um, purpose and sometimes accidentally. For example, uh, Japanese knotweed was brought here from Eastern Asia as an ornamental plant because people thought it looked nice, so they wanted it to grow it um, in this area of the world. And some of these plants are really good at out-competing other plants for resources. Sometimes they're so good at outcompeting plants for resources that they can take over a whole area. One really common non-native invasive plant in this area is the Himalayan blackberry. It was originally bred to be this big, juicy, delicious berry, but it got out of hand, out of control, and now it can be found all over the place in the Pacific Northwest. And it's one of those plants that outcompetes other plants really well and just takes over a whole area so that parts of that ecosystem are not diverse, which as we talked about are, is really important. 
these blackberry plants are bad news for salmon because they outcompete the good native plants in the riparian zone and they don't provide a lot of shade so they don't help cool down the water and they're not as good as trees at preventing erosion and keeping dirt out of the streams. One thing we do here at the Greenway Trust is we remove the blackberry plants by cutting them down and digging them out and then we come back and replace them with native trees and shrubs. Now that you know a little bit more about native and non-native invasive plants, I want to invite you to find some of these plants in your own neighborhood. You can use our Greenway native and non-native invasive plant sheets, which are linked in the description of this video, to identify some of the plants growing around where you live. And you can also do some more of your own research. And to dig a little deeper, I'll invite you to choose one native plant and one non-native invasive plant and make a fact sheet for each one. Here's one I made for the black cottonwood tree. For your native plant, include the name of the plant, where it can be found or its range, what kind of habitat it needs, and three interesting facts about it and then make a drawing of that plant. Maybe you find it in your yard or your neighborhood, or maybe you wanna look up a picture of what it looks like on the internet. And the non-native invasive plant I chose was Japanese knotweed. For your non-native invasive plant, also include the name of the plant and a drawing. And for this one, um, we'd like you to include where it came from, how it got here, why it's a problem, and how to get rid of it. And if you'd like, you can share what you created by emailing a picture of your fact sheets to education at mtsgreenway.org and we might share them on our social media. And check out the next video to learn about the next life stage of salmon, which is called fry. See you next time.